Well, the battle for Iowa, and that means the country has started. Potential Republican presidential hopefuls pitching themselves at what's called the Iowa Freedom Summit in Des Moines. You see right now Governor Chris Christie continuing to speak to lay out his strategy and his plan if indeed he potentially decides to run for president. This is considered an official kickoff of the 2016 campaign. Among the other potential candidates who have appeared there today, former Texas Governor Rick Perry, Senators Ted Cruz, Rick Santorum, and many more. By the way, Mitt Romney, Jeb Bush, Marco Rubio, Rand Paul, well, they skipped it. So... Could this event predict an eventual nominee? Susan Estrich is professor of law and political science at USC and a Fox News contributor and, of course, the former campaign manager for a Democrat, Michael Dukakis. So, Susan, this is kind of like, I guess, the inverse of Miss America, where they come out, you know, one by one with their speeches and they have a certain time to trot out their wares. Does it really uh, mean anything? It's a beauty contest. That's what we used to call them. We'd say, this is another beauty contest. And believe me, none of them would make Miss America. You know, it's not going to determine who the nominee is. But for some candidates, particularly lesser known candidates, it can help you gather supporters for organization, help you raise some money, help you build up your war chest. But don't look at this as the choice of the nominee, because if it were, you can believe that Jeb Bush wouldn't have skipped it and who else was on your yeah, list. Yeah. There, there were a lot of front runners who skipped it. Well, you know, it's interesting that some of the early uh, reviews or that Scott Walker did a bang up job. So does that does this help someone in, in a lower tier, perhaps, of the presidential yeah, race yeah. to like zoom up? Yeah. Yeah, that's what you usually do. I mean, when you have, I mean, it is 2015, mm -hmm. last time I checked, and the election is not for a while. <laughs> so this far out, what, you know, what you want to do, particularly if you're one of the candidates none of us have ever heard of, is you'll go almost anywhere that a television camera and a few people are to try to, you know, get your head above the pack. So if Scott Walker can do a bang-up job on this, Maybe that means it gets more volunteers to sign up. Maybe that means some would-be donors say, you know what, I want to go with Scott Walker. It just makes his life easier going forward. Yeah, let's, you mentioned uh, what it may mean. Let's take a look at the record in the past. First, let's start with the GOP. <laughs> 2008, who won it? Mick, uh, uh, Mike Huckabee. Our old Mike Huckabee, 34 percent. Mitt Romney, who became the nominee, was second. In 2000, President Bush won. Uh, Steve Forbes, isn't that interesting, was the sec came in second. 88, take a look at this. Bob Dole, 37 percent. Pat Robinson was second. George H.W. Bush, the sitting vice president, went on to become president. Only 18.6 percent. Let's look at yeah. your side of the right. aisle. 2008, President Obama, of course, uh, a stunning kind of knockout of Hillary Clinton there. He, uh, Hillary came in third. Pa past John Edwards, everyone was saying, oh man, oh man, what a defeat for Hillary. And look at 92. Tom Harkin, favorite son, Paul Songus, Bill Clinton, two-term president, 2.8 percent. And here's one which you may remember, 1988, Richard Gephardt won, Paul Simon, the senator, not the singer, at second place. And of course, there's Michael Dukakis at 22.2 percent. And of course, Mr. Dukakis went on to be the nominee. What was that like? Were you there in right. Iowa? And, and as, a, as a top campaign official, how do you deal with that when you come Hundreds in third? of times I was there. You know, <clears throat> the funny thing about 88 on the Republican side, I've been to Iowa almost enough to register to vote. Um, the funny thing about 88 was we knew, look, Iowa wasn't a state for a Massachusetts guy. You know, we had no natural connections there. Our goal was to finish third in Iowa. And have, as long as we finished third, we figured we could go to New Hampshire mm -hmm. and we'd have some, we wouldn't be knocked out. So our only goal in Iowa was not to be knocked out. But I'll never forget driving around, you know, during the caucus night. What do you do if you're a big shot? Like, you, know, you got nothing to do, you're waiting. I remember driving around and seeing hundreds of church school buses and I thought oh my god Pat Robertson and what Ralph Reed had done that was when it really started was he had organized all the church groups a lot of them had had church suppers and then they all went to the caucus so the result was Robertson as you say came in second there was huge publicity about it and you know George Bush had to get his act together mm -hmm. in New Hampshire well and you did come in third and I bet you uh had deep fried Twinkies because you haven't lived if you haven't gone to the Iowa State Fair and have them deep fried Twinkies. I I have had them the Twinkies, the hot dogs. If eating deep fried made you president, one oh. of my guys would have won. Oh. <laughs> well, uh, maybe didn't eat enough. All right, Susan, thanks so much.
But don't forget, you can, you. Read, you can read Susan's syndicated column. It's in newspapers across the country every Wednesday and Friday, and they're still talking right now at the Iowa Freedom Summit.